Good morning. Uh, welcome to the uh, recording of the topic of the LIFE uh, 21 topic uh, audits, uptake of energy audits recommendations for the energy transition of companies. Um, my name is Oronzo Daroiso and I work as project manager in CIMEA uh, in the LIFE um, clean energy uh, transition in the LIFE unit. And um, this topic is part of the clean, uh, li the li of the clean energy transition sub program. Um, this topic builds on uh, previous topics from the uh, energy efficiency uh, call of Horizon 2020. Um, its, its goal is to increase uh, the uptake of energy audit recommendation in, in companies, uh, mainly SMEs. Um, so, uh, the the policy the policy framework of this topic uh, is the uh, is article 8 of the eed um, article which uh, asks uh, the for the availability to all final customers of cost effective independent uh, and high quality uh, energy audits um, it also asks member states to uh, develop programs that encourage smes to undergo energy audits and facilitate the subsequent implementation of the measures uh, and ensure that non-SMEs, meaning uh, companies that are bigger than SMEs, are subject to an energy audit or to um, an energy or environmental management system, which includes uh, an audit. Now, the uh, challenges uh, linked to uh, the uh, what is then the implementation uh, of, of this article is that, um, well, first, uh, only a small share of the measures uh, that are recommended are implemented. Uh, so even though um, audits did prove to be um, a good instrument to uh, tackle the information gap, which is, the, uh, which is one of the key barriers preventing uh, companies to implement uh, measures and to have a view of their energy consumption, uh, still, uh, there is, there is a difficulty in, in doing the step forward and go for the implementation of the measures. Uh, there is also an issue linked to the uncertainty of the actual energy savings, so which may increase uh, the perceived risks on both sides, companies, but also uh, the financing uh, sector, uh, which also coupled with sometimes uh, difficulty in accessing finance for companies or limited public incentives make that uh, these recommendations then sit on the desk of companies and um, remain uh, non-implemented. Uh, a further aspect which um, hinders the uh, implementation of measures is that the concept of multiple benefits um, is, usually, is, is sometimes underestimated, um, especially by those companies that are very small or um, not uh, energy intensive. So uh, the scope uh, the scope of the topic is to uh, provide tailor-made support activities uh, covering the whole process. So from energy audit to the implementation of measures. Uh, this this because um, this is because we. Uh, this is because we believe that uh, companies need uh, a tailored approach because depending on the territory where they're located or the economic sector in which they operate or um, you know, due to a number of factors, they would require um, a more of a, um, a more of a individualized um, support. Now, um, it is true that uh, some companies um, may already uh, have an energy audit um, and some others may be very motivated. So for this, for this reason, um, depending on the what we can call readiness or willingness of the companies to, to engage into the implementation of the measures, uh, proposals may, um, may suggest uh, operational support uh, to companies as a service or to uh, advisory uh, services to company staff, um, or actually both. Um, the ultimate goal being uh, an increase <clears throat> in the rate of implementation of the uh, measures recommended in, in audits. 
Uh, on top of this, uh, we ask uh, that proposals identify and justify the economic sectors, uh, the size of enterprises and the territories in which uh, they would like to focus to, um, to justify and demonstrate the adequacy of the proposed approach. Um, likewise, it would be uh, a positive element to show that there is commitment and support from uh, key stakeholders, such as professional federations, local and regional authorities, chambers of commerce, uh, etc. A few words about impacts. Uh, clearly, two uh, key uh, transversal uh, impacts which uh, we, we expect in in proposals is contribution to a better implementation of Article 8 of the EED, um, and of course, increased rate on transformation of energy audits to into, into concrete measure uh, implementation. Uh, so these are the, the, let's say, the framework and key uh, impacts which, um, which we would expect in proposals. Um, linked uh, to these, of course, there are uh, indicators such as number of companies involved uh, in the project and receiving uh, support, number of energy audits carried out, uh, number of company staff uh, with improved skills, knowledge, um, and of course, number of energy auditors, other stakeholders uh, also trained or with improved uh, skills, knowledge, thanks to the, thanks to the action. Um, also, uh, there are three uh, common indicators to all the LIFE program, which are the investments triggered uh, by the action, the primary energy savings, and the renewable energy generation, if any, um, in the project. Uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, this topic is uh, building on uh, existing uh, topics and, and projects. Uh, for this reason, I would invite you to. Um, to look into these. Um, in particular, I refer to topics EE16 uh, um, and EE15, and especially EE8, uh, where the focus was on capacity building uh, for companies. And um, thanks to these projects, we now have uh, an extensive literature and analysis on uh, which are the main barriers and enabling factors. Uh, for SMEs and companies in general uh, concerning the uh, application and implementation of audit recommendations. So I really invite you to consult these existing sources uh, so that you can build on these uh, in, your, in your proposal. Some useful links, uh, which I also uh, invite you to, uh, to consult. Uh, one is a very recent uh, study, technical assistance on the effectiveness of the implementation of the definition of SMEs, uh, and uh, a report which uh, brings together uh, a number of projects which we have funded in the past and that were related to uh, SMEs, uh, non-SMEs, capacity building and energy audits. Uh, you can find the web link um, here in the PPT and a couple of studies from the EAB. Uh, I also invite you to keep in touch with us. You can sign up uh, to the, you can consult our Clean Energy Transition webpage. And in case you still have questions, uh, you can still use the, uh, you can still use the um, RTD uh, portal uh, to, to submit a question and we will be very happy to reply. Good luck with your, with your proposals. Thank you very much.